Have you ever wanted to try out Windows 10 or 11 without actually having to go through the process of putting those operating systems on your computer, only to find out later that you really didn't like them? Or maybe you have some software that you'd like to try out without actually installing it on your computer. Or maybe even test out a script that you found online. Or maybe you just want to experiment with different malware viruses without actually causing any harm to your PC. You can do all this stuff for free, and I'm going to show you how to do that today using a program called VMware Workstation Player. It's super easy, super safe, and you're going to love it. Now, VMware is a virtualization software that's been around for a long time, and a lot of big companies use it. And it does cost money, but there's a component inside of it called Workstation Player that is actually free to the public. And that's what you can use to create virtual machines inside your own PC. This program runs on both Windows and Linux, and it's super easy to install and configure. And it doesn't matter how much of a novice computer user you are, it's super easy to set up. And the best part is there's no danger to your PC, so it gives you the opportunity to experiment a little bit, test out some new software, and if you like it, great. If you don't, delete it. No big deal, no harm done. So before we get too far in depth, let me kind of explain to you what an ISO image is so you're familiar with it, and then you'll have a better idea of what you may or may not want to do with the VMware software. So traditionally, people would get a CD like this, okay? It's got a bunch of files contained on it. When you pop it in your computer, it starts up and it runs. If you've ever installed Microsoft Windows, you've ever installed Office or any other program off CD, it's because there's files sitting on the disk. An ISO image is basically a virtual snapshot of what's on here contained in one single file. Now, normally what you would have to do is extract the contents of this ISO file, very much like a zip file, but there are programs like VMware that actually can read the ISO file as is without you having to extract anything. So basically think of an ISO as a digital copy of a disk on your computer. Simple. It'll make more sense in a minute, I promise. And let me just say for the record, some people call them ISOs, some people call them ISOs, just depends on who you are and where you're from. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about, it's ISO. So you may be asking, what ISOs do I want to run on my computer? Well, for example, if you have a Windows 10 computer and you are happy with it, but you keep getting prompted to upgrade to Windows 11, and you've looked around and heard good things and bad things, and you're just not sure if you want to take the time to commit to upgrading to Windows 11 because you may not like it. Well, with the VMware software that I'm going to show you, you can download the Windows 11 ISO file, you can install it on your computer, and actually run a full copy of Windows 11. And that'll give you the opportunity to determine, hey, I like this, and then at that point, you can go ahead and upgrade your main PC to Windows 11 because you've already looked at it and checked it out and you thought, hey, this is pretty cool. Or you may say, you know what, I don't like it at all. It's too new, it's too weird, whatever, whatever your reasons are. You delete that Windows 11 virtual machine, no harm done. You go back to your Windows 10 like nothing ever happened. It's pretty cool. And it's a great way to test out new software without having to spend a lot of time upgrading your computer. Now, there are tons of ISO repositories out there. Again, Windows, Office, uh, you know, other operating systems like Linux or whatever. Um, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to assume that you are a Windows 10 user and probably want to check out Windows 11. We're going to create a Windows 11 virtual machine using a Windows 11 ISO file, which we downloaded from Microsoft. So before we do anything else, we need to install the VMware workstation software. So what you're going to want to do, just go to Google in your favorite browser, type in download VMware free. And the first link that comes up is going to be the download VMware workstation player. Just go ahead and click on that. Now when this page comes up, you're going to see at the top there under the breadcrumbs there, click on VMware right next to products. And then you'll see VM Workstation Player. You can go ahead and just click on the download for free. Go ahead and download whichever version is applicable for your system, whether it's Linux or Windows. And then just go ahead and download and install it and accept all the defaults all the way through. And then once it's done, go ahead and click Finish. And then on your Start menu or desktop, go to VM Workstation Player. You'll see a box that comes up like this. Just go ahead and tell it to use the free non-commercial and then click Finish. And now you have the Workstation Player interface. Now at this point you don't have any ISO files. I went ahead and downloaded the Windows 11 ISO file and 
at the end of this video, if this is something you want to do, then you can go find your own ISO and then just simply load it following these same steps. Hope you're enjoying the content so far, but we got to take a second to thank today's sponsor. Tired of long hours, eye strain, and back pain that come with boring old standard office desks? Check out Fazevo's line of standing desks. These well-packaged, high-strength metal desks are extremely well-designed and very rugged, supporting over 300 pounds of weight. Installation and assembly is simple and easy to follow. You ready to elevate your game? One button lifts the entire desk up to approximately 46 inches off the ground. Perfect for those times where you need to just straighten your back out or get up and close and personal on a project that you're working on. You ready to sit back down for a while and answer emails? One button brings your entire desk back down to a comfortable 29 inch height. With both a standing and sitting memory button, you'll be easily able to get comfortable with just one press. Beautiful, solid tabletop design that easily supports multiple monitors and more. Available in four different tabletop color schemes, two separate desk widths if you need a little more room. Check it out today. It's been an absolute game changer for me. And now, back to the video. So we have our blank workstation player. What we want to do is create a new virtual machine. And the next screen that comes up is going to ask us which ISO file we want to load. Now in this case, I'm going to choose this one, which is the one that I downloaded a little while ago. And then click next and give it whatever name you want and then for location doesn't matter where you put it i'm just going to put it on my in drive which is one of my local drives with tons of space click next next screen because it's windows 11 it's requiring an encryption uh, password so i'm going to say the only the files needed to support tpm are encrypted password i'm just going to give it password Check that box to remember, click next. Disk size here, I'm just gonna go ahead and change it to 70 gigabytes. Select store virtual disk as a single file if you're gonna leave it on one machine. If you're gonna move it across a network or set it up on a different machine, you'd wanna split it into multiple files. But for most people just choose single file, click next. Now here you can change your hardware if you want to say use multiple processors with this specific virtual machine. You can enable virtualization engines, network adapter, uh, your display settings. If you want a lot more memory for a particular workstation that maybe is a little more graphic intensive, whatever changes you wanna make, you can make them here. Click close. Now it'll take those settings and install their workstation. Check this box right here, click finish. What it's going to do now is it's going to create that virtual disk and here in just a second you'll get a windows installer menu just as if you had booted it off a windows installer disk that you downloaded from microsoft and just like that we have a working windows 11 system running in a virtual environment on my windows 10 pc you can go in here and do anything that you would normally do in windows all the functionality is the same. Now, if you look here, you'll see under the virtual C drive, you have a total 70 gigabyte drive. So basically that is space that was allocated on one of my Windows 10 drives that I used to create a Windows 11 environment. And this would be a perfect opportunity for you to go through and play with Windows 11 and see if this is something that you like. You can see all the hardware from your machine passes through to the virtual machine, so you have internet access and all of that. And there's a lot of stuff you can do with the virtual machine. I'm not gonna go into that on this video, but this is a great opportunity for you to go and poke around and see what you think without having to spend any money on Windows 11. And you know what, if you like it, great. If you don't, big deal. Now, if you wanna go and make this larger, you go into your virtual machine display settings and adjust your virtual monitor size as big as you want. And as you can see here, now I've got full screen running on my Windows 10. I can just minimize this and I'm back to what I'm doing. And then if I wanna open it right back up, I just go right back here and make whatever changes I want. If I want to shut down, if I wanna pause the session, I can just basically turn off the virtual machine just like this and it's gone. When I'm ready to bring it back up, I can go right back to my virtual machine. There's my Windows 11, double click it. And it's basically the same as turning my computer on for the first time. And of course I am 
I'm not familiar enough yet with all the different configurations and how to force those settings to stay between sessions. I'm sure there's an easy way to do it. But again, the point of this was to show you how to use a virtual machine inside your existing operating system without causing any issues whatsoever. Now, the last thing I want to show you is if you have that Windows virtual machine and you suddenly decide, you know what, I don't need it anymore. All you have to do is right click on it and choose delete from disk. Then it's going to delete the entire installation off of that uh, hard drive that you installed it to. So once you click this, you will have to restart the virtual machine from an ISO and set it up again, just like we did in, or initially with the Windows setup. So don't delete it unless you're 100% sure you don't need it. Click yes, and there it goes. Now it's gone. So that was pretty cool, right? Now you can run any operating system inside your own PC, test it out, decide if you like it before you spend a dime. So now you know how to create a virtual workstation. If you want to get those Windows ISO files I told you about, you can click this video right up here. What I do in this video is show you actually how to take those downloadable ISO files and create installer disks, but you can also take those ISO files and plug them right into VM workstation. As you saw in the video, you can run the operating system and check it out for yourself. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.